Hello everyone and welcome to Cloud Auto Scaling and HA Proxy Balancing for Jitsi Meet. We are continuing the series with a tutorial for launching large Jitsi Meet installations. The free and open source WebRTC video conferencing platform Jitsi Meet can easily handle smaller setups. The default installation packages will fit the needs of your company or online community meetings. But if you are building a large online service and you need the cavalry, the scaling and balancing setups can save the day. This is the typical setup and you see only one video bridge here. Not that it's not enough for most of the production use cases and for testing setups, but if you will be hosting a large number of conferences at the same time, you may need a more complex setup. What you can do is add more video bridges or duplicate the whole platform and load balance over it with HA proxy, or you can do both. Adding video bridges will help you increase the number of simultaneously hosted conferences and also will act as a failover for your service. If one bridge goes down, there will still be another one to create new conferences in. And adding more Jitsi Meet instances can help you also balance between these different shards. If one Jitsi Meet shard goes down, there will still be another one to create new conferences in. When we talk about Jitsi Meet, we mean the whole platform, but this is also the name of the front-end that runs with a web server. All the components of the platform can be installed on different servers, but for convenience here we accept that Prosody, Gcofo, the web server, Nginx by default, and the Jitsi Meet frontend are all installed and running on one machine. We call this machine Jitsi Meet Server. Please take that into account if you have different setup. All the video bridges are on separate servers. It is technically possible to run more than one video bridge process on the same machine, but it beats the purpose unless it is a very, very big server. Having all video bridges on separate machines also makes the scaling easier and also cheaper if you are paying for the cloud services. Unneeded bridges are stopped and you pay only for what you are really using. So for each Jitsi Meet instance, you have one Jitsi Meet server facing the internet and one or more Jitsi Video Bridge servers, grouped together and all connected to the Jitsi Meet server. You can configure them in an auto scale group and think of them and their Meet server as a whole unit. We call this a shard and it's the basic scaling unit. To scale you need a shard. Inside the shard the video bridges are load balanced and the least loaded takes the new conference. To prepare the scaling, you can use your cloud platform tools, if ones are available, or you can use your own scripts. A lot of cloud providers give you the tools to create scaling groups, or to have an image of a server and to quickly provision a new copy of this server using the image. If you are using your own IaaS cloud platform with OpenStack, for example, you will have the freedom to implement this from bottom up. If you are using a cloud provider like Amazon Web Services, DigitalOcean or Google Cloud Platform, you can use the tools they provide. For example, with Amazon AWS, when creating the server instance for the first video bridge, in the Details Configuration screen, choose to launch it into an auto-scaling group. By the way, have in mind that auto-scaling is not available in all AWS regions. Give the launch configuration a name and create it. The auto-scaling group, which will be the group of video bridges, will need also a name and a subnet. Choose the same subnet where the Jitsi Meet server is so that you don't have trouble later connecting between them internally, if needed. You can set up simple rules for scaling. 
for example, to scale between 1 and 5 servers when the average network traffic exceeds 1 gigabit per second. For all this, you may wish to enable CloudWatch, so that you can use it to automatically trigger the scaling when it detects load changes. CloudWatch is a separate Amazon service and you'll be built for the monitoring, alarms, etc. So be sure to check the pricing. Otherwise, you can use internal Linux utilities to monitor the servers and command line tools to connect to AWS and launch or shut down the additional machines. You can also add email notification for the scaling events and add custom tags to the scaling group. For AWS, you can use also command line tools and it will be much easier and convenient because you can use these tools in the scripts that will automate all of this. And the automation needed is the following. First, detection of scaling up need like high load or high network traffic to and from the video bridge. Then, launching of a new video bridge in the scaling group. The next step is optional and depends on your setup. It is configurations of XMPP component name and secret in Prosody and in the video bridge, plus Prosody reload. Then, detection of the scaling down need, shutting the video bridge gracefully and waiting for all its conferences to end, stopping and terminating the needed video bridge. Of course, you can use the tools for a lot of other things, like gathering statistics, checking the monitoring and alarms, if you have AWS CloudWatch enabled, and so on. Now let's talk more about the video bridge scaling, because it's one of the two most important things here, the other being the HA proxy balancing. We have a separate video tutorial for load balancing the video bridges, where you can get all the Linux configuration details. Each video bridge is connected to the Prosody server as an XMPP component. To get a second video bridge, you need to make a second component connection. This means that in Prosody there must be another component configuration waiting for connection from outside. The video bridge authenticates with a password and starts to serve as a component. Although all the video bridges are the same and they do exactly the same work, they can share one component configuration. Each video bridge must have its own slot in Prosody to click in. And these components are predefined in the Prosody config files, so for any change in them to become active, a reload of Prosody is needed. You can either use scripts to edit and reload the configs on each scaling event or, which is a lot more convenient, have all the components configured from the start and waiting for video bridges to appear. For example, if you plan to have a maximum of 10 video bridges, you simply create 10 components configurations. Most of the time, most of them won't be connected and you may see warnings in the Prosody logs, but it's not a problem. On the video bridges, you also have to prepare the configs. On scaling up, you use an exact copy of the first bridge, so a little bit of reconfiguration is needed. Each bridge connects with a name and a secret string. The secret can be the same for all bridges, but the name has to be unique. You must either use a script from another server to connect to the new bridge and edit its component name inside, or use an auto-started script from within the bridge itself, which sets the name to something independent that is already set in the Prosody config, like for example the host name of the new bridge machine, or a tag in the cloud platform, or the number of the bridge, and so on. This way, the scaling up and down can go smoothly and as fast as possible. 
In that scaling setup, we always have a video bridge ready to host our new conference, because if all the bridges are busy, the system will quickly launch a new video bridge. But we still have a point of failure, and it's in a big and important part of the system. If the mid-server fails, no matter how much video bridges we have and how load balanced they are, no conferences are possible. So we need to have a spare Jitsi mid server in case the first one fails. When duplicating the whole instance of mid plus video bridges, why not load balance between these two shards? If you have an HA proxy in front of two or more Jitsi mid shards, each consisting of one Jitsi mid server and multiple balanced video bridges, when one shard fails, that won't bring down the whole service. And also, the load balance will be better, because you can have the different shards in different geographical regions and distribute the conferences by the regions where the participants are from. Let's say you have one shard in an European region with faster network throughout Europe, another one in North America, and the third one in South America. And you have a group of businessmen that want to make a business meeting. It goes to the first shard, and when new people join this conference, the HA proxy will know to point them to the same place. Even if there are people from all around the globe in some conferences, chances that there will be a lot of local conferences that won't be put randomly on a bridge in a distant region. The same will happen when a group of medical experts join a health conference, or a community of IT experts opens a room to talk about IT tech. The point is that having such setup you can scale the whole shards and still be sure each participant goes to the right place. And you can implement geolocation mapping and redirecting in HA proxy by using GeoIP database and binding it with HA proxy access control lists. All this is beyond the scope of such short tutorial, so please consult the HA proxy documentation and examples. Also, please have in mind that geolocation mapping is not always reliable, because IP addresses change, the GeoIP database gets old, and also a lot of people today use proxies and VPNs. So, while it sounds cool, Take the geolocation option with a grain of salt. With all the scaling and load balancing options, you have a very flexible system. But once a conference is started, you have a critical single point of failure, and that is the video bridge where this conference is running. Currently, the conferences can't be moved to another bridge so a failure in the bridge leads to a failure in the conference. A system or network problem of the bridge can lead to bad experience or failure in the conference. That's why it's important to keep an eye on the video bridges. Even though you can have scaling and balancing, this won't replace the good old system monitoring, health checks and alarms. HA proxy, which stands for High Availability Proxy is a free and open source load balancer and proxy server. It is used in front of highly loaded services to distribute the load across multiple servers. Once again, please consult the HA proxy documentation. Here is just an example. The servers that receive the forwarded requests are grouped in backends. Each backend is responsible for a certain type of requests and consists of multiple interchangeable servers. If you add more servers to a specific backend, you scale it horizontally, and it can take more of the same load. If you add more backends, you can deal with different kinds of traffic, for example, coming from different IP ranges, if you decide to use geolocation mapping. For balancing Jitsi Meet, we need to manage just HTTPS traffic. 
Have in mind that the service of Jitsi Meet is not as simple as having a web page on HTTPS, although from outside it kinda looks like it. If you have a simple web page, you can have a complex high availability setup in front of it. And be sure that the service has practically no interruption at all. Jitsi Meet, on the other hand, has not only to serve the web part of the application but also host the conferences which is the real meaning of the service. And as once created, the conferences can't be moved from one bridge to another, there is no true high availability in the strict meaning of the term. You can add more video bridges to a shard to scale it, and you can add more shards to distribute them geographically and balance them with HA proxy. You can also add a second HA proxy and set up an active-passive HA proxy pair working behind a floating IP. This way, you won't lose the ability to host new conferences even if one of the HA proxies goes down. But if the video bridge on which a specific conference is hosted goes down, currently there is nothing you can do to save this conference. So all the load balancing, scaling and failover will work on the level of the whole service. For each separate conference, once it's created, only the corresponding video bridge is critically responsible. That being said, the scaling, shards and HA proxy are very important parts of a large Jitsi Meet setup, because with them you can decrease the load on each of the platform components and hence help the system run easier. Now you know how to scale up and down the Jitsi Meet platform on a cloud infrastructure and also how to load balance two or more Jitsi Meet instances with HA proxy. For scaling, you need some automation to start and stop the new bridges, either from your cloud platform or through your scripts, or both. The new bridges must be configured to quickly connect to ProsoDS components and also when scaling down they must be shut gracefully when all their conferences expire. For the balancing you have to plan and prepare your shards, distribute them geographically if you want. On really very loaded setups you can use a pair of active passive HA proxies with failover IP. And always the most important thing to keep in mind is that currently conferences can't be moved between video bridges. If a bridge breaks down, the people go down in the river with it. So take care of your bridges. Thanks for watching. Take care.